in that individual, go to Matthew 18, and I want to deal with just a couple of verses from the ministry of Jesus. These are words written in red where Jesus speaks to us a verse that I think has become one of the more abused passages in the ministry of Jesus. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. And if you're like me, you heard these two verses basically espoused this way in church. And that was this. If, if we could just come together in unity and agree in the name of Jesus on something, we could have whatever we ask the Lord to do. He would do it if we could just get in agreement, get our faith on the same level, and that as we get together as a body of Christ, two or three of us together, the Holy Spirit will fall right down here in the midst of us. If we can get two or three people in the house, there's only two or three, there's not very many of us here today, but just two or three together, then he'll be right there in the midst of us. And I think on the surface, we're just really repeating what we read. We're not really adding any depth to it. We're just sort of changing the language a little bit. Like, hey, if a couple of us could agree, God would move. Or if a couple of us would get in the same room, God would show up. But what's that mean? It's one thing to just quote it and, and then re-say it in our own tongue, and then another thing to understand it. Well, to do that, you've got to have context. And here's the issue with this text. This is, like all other texts, doesn't exist in a vacuum. It stands at the end of a longer paragraph. It stands at the end of a story where Jesus says, if a brother sins against you, go tell him his fault, just you and him. Hopefully you'll be able to work it out. If you can't work it out with just you and him, then take two or three people with you because let things be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. If that doesn't work, now Jesus is moving on, deeper recourse. He goes, if that doesn't work, if two or three of you go, then what you need to do is bring it and tell the entire church, which is an interesting phrase, because church isn't something that they had really in their vernacular as far as this kind of church. Church is really the called ones, the gathered ones. And so bring them to the people in your life that really matter. And then... If he refuses to listen to that, you tried. You went one-on-one. -on -one, you went with two or three people. You went with a group of your friends. If he refuses then, then just forget him. Because you can't, there's no way you're going to be able to make up if you've brought everybody into the situation. And then he says, if you, if you bind that relationship, then it's bound in the kingdom. If you release that relationship, it's loosed in the kingdom. And I even say to you, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And I tell you that if you could agree on any one thing, then there would be nothing left you couldn't accomplish. Contextually, you can't agree on any one thing and therefore disassociation because you are not able to come to an agreement. If you could come to an agreement, here's the beauty. If you could get on the same page about something that mattered, there'd be nothing you couldn't accomplish. And man, is that not true? If we could come to an agreement on something, there'd be nothing in that particular area that we would not be able to accomplish. He says, if two or three gather in my name, then you know that that's where I am. Why? Because there's something that happens in the middle of that agreement. Let's look at that word. The Greek word agree. Go back to verse 19. Again, I say to you, if any two of you agree on earth is the Greek word symphonio, where we get the English word symphony. What is Jesus saying? If any two of you can make a symphony. Now, I know I'm interpolating a little bit because the word symphony is not in their vernacular. Certainly not 17th, 18th, 19th century version of music called a symphony. But the word is why we derive the phrase symphonies, because a lot of things that don't necessarily go together lay down their own individualness to come together. So you don't get to be the showboat violinist or the showboat cello player or the showboat trumpet player. You gotta bring it down a notch so that you fit within the greater context of symphony. There's no solo artist. If there are, it's concerto for such and so and orchestra. We'll highlight one instrument over the other, but a symphony is everybody melding into that same flow, that same melody. And so Jesus says, if you can get Symphonio, if you can bring that sound into where it's equal on the same thing, he says there's nothing you wouldn't be able to accomplish. If two or three could get in on the symphony, then we could build whatever we need to build. And I, I will say it this far. I, I think if we could get in concert, if we could get on symphony, 
We could cure anything we need to cure. We could solve anything we need to solve. We could do anything we need to do. It is in our power as citizens of the kingdom to do great things upon the earth. But what is it going to require? It is going to require us to figure out what the melody is we should be rallied around. And sometimes I think we're getting a little distracted because we're trying to rally around political ideas or we're trying to rally around ideologies or we're trying to rally around moralities. We're trying to rally around national thoughts or public thought rather than the symphony that I think is the undercurrent, the undertow of the river of Scripture. And Jesus doesn't just have us gathering together around happiness. If you could gather around around happiness, you could accomplish stuff. If you could gather together around me, Meaning you could accomplish stuff. He says, no, if you could gather together around me, he says, you could accomplish stuff because he is the centerpiece of it. Not just a thought process, not just an idea, but him as the centerpiece of that symphony. And I think we could do what needs to be done on the earth if we could get back into that symphonic sound, back into that place. And scripture carries a tune.